Third time lucky. I'm so sorry. Uh, this was, uh, first of all, I did the timing thing wrong. And then uh, we got the time difference wrong. So now, finally, I do have Fred Sargent with me. Uh, let's get him up as, uh, on screen as quickly as possible because we all want to know how he is. Uh, Fred, how are you doing? I'm, I'm doing better. Good. Definitely good. doing better. Let's give a bit of background. The reason why I'm asking Fred as to his health is because uh, last week or two weeks ago at Vermont Pride, uh, Fred... Uh, did a, a, a one-man protest, I, I, I think it was. Um, yes, yeah, so it was a primarily silent demonstration. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and he was viciously attacked by trans rights activists. Um, so, Fred, uh, let's start with uh, what were you trying to draw attention to with the protest? Well, uh, one of my signs kind of summed up what I was trying to say there. And it was a red circle with a red line through it. And it had two words on it, black face, woman face. That sign made them apoplectic. <laughs> uh, yeah. the, 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 and the comparison is valid, uh, which is part of the reason why they got so upset. Uh, I was immediately confronted over it by a guy in a fishnet outfit, um, <laughs> You know, and I can't help myself. You know, I, I said to him, you're not really the catch of the day. You know, so. <laughs> um, uh, I, I always keep my sense of humor going yeah. into anything like this. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, the, uh, this, one of the things about you, Fred, is that like you had been kind of, uh, I would say, I, I think it's fair to say, retired from active activism for a number of Very, years. Yeah. Uh, can we remind people, what, what was it that brought you back into this fight? Why, what, what started you uh, getting worried about what was going on? Well, I, 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 had, I had gone to an event in Paris back in 2019, and, and I started to hear a story about Stonewall that I, I did not recognize at all. Uh, it, it was not part of my lived experience. Um, uh, gay people were generally out of the story. Lesbians were completely arrest, uh, erased, despite their significant role in, in that period and all periods since, really. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I came back and, and started reading. And I you know, looked at things online. I purchased books. I, I read articles. I, I reached out to everybody. I reached out to transgender people who were very active online. Not one of them would respond to me. Right. And you know, I, I know my 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 questions at the time appeared very ignorant because I was. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, I didn't know how bad things were. And as you say, what a mess we're in. Yeah. Um, it, it, but it did become apparent to me. And you were one of the first people to recommend to me that I get in touch with Bev and Kate at the LGB Alliance. And yeah. uh, you can see that. They sent me some flowers, so oh, you know, good for them. made a connection. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, that's good. Well, they're 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 also in the same position of seeing um, their entire history of gay activism erased and rubbished uh, on behalf of straight uh, cross dressers. Um, yeah, and, and I, I I did realize early on that you know my position was significantly diff different than a lot of other people. Uh, I I could afford to step out and speak my mind. And speak yes. truthfully, and yes. and confront power, uh, and not be concerned that you know I was going to lose my pension or my social security or or be thrown out of my house or off my land. They couldn't they couldn't touch me, and they certainly have tried. Uh, yeah. There's always something new uh, that they're trying to do, and you know they they really need to look at somebody else because they're wasting their time, or or perhaps it's better that they wasted on me. Well, yeah. And you, you've I, gone through the same thing. You what, sorry? You've gone through the same thing. You, you sure. stuck your neck out too. Sure. But the thing is, you know, physically, I mean, I, I was nervous about going to the uh, Standing for Women event because I thought my presence might uh, inflame things. Um, and these people are, you know, we've seen time and time again, they're willing to be violent, not just to, you know, men, but to women. So uh, I just thought it was extraordinarily brave of you to put yourself out there. 
uh, what happened when um, they began to mess with you? Well, the the the, the uh, group that the first um, antagonist came from is called the um, Outright Vermont Group, and they primarily deal with the young. So they had a lot of young people in their contingent, and a young man in a dress uh, waving a, a humongous uh, trans flag. He, he peeled off from the group and I, I wasn't really paying attention to, to him. And he uh, grabbed my sign and mm -hmm. took off down the street with it. Uh, you know, I, I, I have mobility problems and, uh, uh, you know, it's a little difficult for me to get after somebody. But even at my age, I still produce adrenaline and I was <laughs> able to catch up to him and I was Very able good. to take my sign back. Wow. Uh, I, I, my, I, again, my 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 life experience is different than most people. I was a police officer. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I, I get scared like anybody else, but you won't see it on my face. When you're, yeah. when you're dealing with a bully, you cannot show fear. You cannot show that, that they have in any way an upper hand. And I, I was able to convey that, which is why they en ended up knocking me to the ground because they just were not able to intimidate me. Right, right. And how many, uh, uh, what kind of injuries did you, did you sustain from it? Uh, well, they, you know, they, of course, falling a couple of times and, uh, uh, you know, they poured coffee on me. And uh, the, the thing that caused the most problem were, were the slaps on the back of the head that I kept receiving. Uh, there's a picture that we'll be turning over to the police where you can see somebody uh, jamming their, el uh, their um, umbrella into my back. Um, I didn't know they poured coffee on you, Fred. You know, yeah. That's taken me by surprise. Um, Fred, can you remind people, uh, what was your involvement in the Stonewall riots? Well, uh, early on, when, as a teenager, I moved down to New York like many gay men did back then. They moved to New York or some urban area where there was a gay community that they could uh, be in. And... Yeah. Uh, I, I, early on, I met a, a fellow named Craig Rodwell, who was a pioneer of the, the, the early gay rights movement, the, the pre-Stonewall movement. Uh, and, and he was a firebrand. Uh, he, he had founded the first lesbian and gay bookshop in the world. Uh, I, I quickly went to work there. We, we established a partnership and, and uh, uh, I, I managed the shop and he was able to devote more time to his activism and our mail order business and that sort of thing. So we had been up to dinner that night and uh, we're walking past um, the stone wall when, when all hell broke, was breaking loose. And- uh, So you, in you fact, just hop, happened to be passing by at the moment it kicked off? Yeah, in fact, I, I use that line frequently. I was passing by and mm. uh, people who try to change the story, like uh, you have a group there called Pink News, They've seized that line to say he wasn't at Stonewall. Even he admits he just passed by. Yeah, well, exactly. we were there every night of the riots from beginning to end. Yeah, yeah. We and you're, you're it, organized. Yes, and your and your involvement is uh, is um, is is uh, sorry. What's the word? Is documented in things like yes. uh, David Carter's book Stonewall. Is David Carter right? Yes. David Carter's David Carter, book, Stonewall. Yeah. Yeah, you're all over yeah, the so, so, so There are a number of others. And, and a number and of as others, a, yes. As, as an organization that purports to uh, have a journalistic ethic, uh, they do a piss poor job of looking for the facts. Oh, they, I'll, they, I'll, I'll, I'll say it quite, quite straight out. Ben Cohen of Pink News is uh, dealing in homophobic propaganda uh, revisionism uh, on one of the most important events in gay history because he is uh, being paid to do so by Google um, right. and by uh, the, let's call it LGBT Inc., uh, which, which basically at the, money, at the moment sees a lot of money in mining uh, this new resource of straight people who think they're gay because they wear eyeshadow. Um, uh, Fred, um, when you were at Stonewall, 
you know, you you started on 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 um, you were there every night, and then the riots kind of led to one could say a, a blossoming of activism that has resulted in uh, what what today is modern pride, modern um, LGB rights, uh, marriage equality, and all the things that went along with it. How does it feel now to be treated the way you've been treated by the people whose rights you successfully uh, won? Well, I, I, I'm not surprised. Uh, the, 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 the people that are the, the, the present day face of the modern LGBTQI plus whatever else, uh, they, have, they have a goal here and it's to create a story. And the only way they can make their story work is to get rid of people like me who are still living and uh, ignore the dead. Uh, and, and that's what they're doing. Uh, I have every confidence in the historians of the future. Uh, historians are ethical people. Uh, they, they don't care what the truth is. They just want the truth. And so I, I, I firmly believe that, that the, the story will be told properly uh, throughout the coming age. We, we still have the problem of, of uh, these organizations uh, having a megaphone at this point, but eventually people are going to get lie, uh, tired of, of lying uh, and, and just ignore them. Yeah, yeah. I think so. I think I, was, I forget who said it, but someone made a very good point. We just need to start talking around these people. You know, yeah. they're uh, they're irrelevant. Um, uh, so, Fred, who were the? You, did you say there was some sort of um, what? What is the state of Vermont Pride at the moment? Who's running it? How did it? How was this? Uh, yeah. Originally, originally, uh, the Burlington Pride, which was the main Pride march in Vermont was the creation of lesbians back in, I, I think, the early 1980s. Um, and, and one of them, Peggy Lures, uh, she knew uh, Barbara Giddings, who was a famous figure in the early gay rights movement. She was uh, one of the people directly responsible for getting the DSM-5, or whatever it was, in four or three, changed so that homosexuality was no longer considered a mental illness. Uh, mm -hmm. so, so these are very important people. They're now all gone from the narrative. Uh, and, and pride in Burlington is gender pride. The organization that puts, that puts it on uh, says that the, none of their people identify as gay and only their attorney identifies as a lesbian. Uh, they, they say that the use of the term gay is a term of erasure, that it erases the many sexual orientations out there. Well. I can only count two, maybe two and a half, uh, and that's it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think it, it, it's interesting that for all these new identities to exist, they must try and erase you from the picture. Yeah, the, 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 the thing that I learned early on, and it, it, it was only a few months after I became involved in, in the discussion, uh, was that um, uh, Burlington Pride uh, was a, a potentially violent group. The, uh, a, a group of feminists had organized a discussion, a gender critical discussion at the local library. And it was you know, announced publicly that it would be held. And he went online and publicly petitioned for volunteers to join him in, and I'll, I'll use his word, disrupting that event. Uh, there had just been a few weeks before or days before uh, an, an event in uh, Seattle, Washington, where transgender activists had done the same thing to women that were trying to meet. Uh, yeah. You know, they came in and announced that they were women and they were taking over, you know, that sort of thing. Yeah, um, sure. He, he, he had done that. Uh, and that's when I knew that, that this was a, a, an organization to watch out for. Uh, yeah. The other organization that I mentioned earlier, Outright Vermont, uh, they, they formally did very good work with young people um, and, and were respected. Mm -hmm. But what happened here was the, the, the inculcation of, of, of a radical idea about gender and firing up a mob. 
And what they, what they let loose on the streets of Burlington was a gang, mm -hmm. uh, a gang that was ready to enforce their ideas on anybody. Uh, the, the, the fishnet guy, he, he was later on TikTok, where all the great minds opine. <laughs> and he, he, he explained that I was expressing things that didn't support asexual people and a, and a group of others that he mentioned. Uh, and, and that therefore I was hateful and could not be allowed to speak. Mm -hmm. um, free expression is, is something in our, that, that's maintained in our constitution. Yep. But these little fascists are trying to change that. And yep. there are many people like me. In fact, over the last few days, I've, I've discovered that there are many, many more people than I imagined who have reached oh, out and contacted me. Uh, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of messages, emails, telephone calls. You know, people find my phone number because I'm one of the least hidden people in the world. And, mm. you know, it's it's. It's been something uh, to see that there are so many good people out there. Yeah, yeah. The problem is, as always, it's the um, it's the it's the gatekeepers. You know, like yeah. uh, I don't think the Guardian probably I I have could be wrong, but I have a feeling the Guardian didn't cover your uh, assault. Pink News definitely didn't. Um, all these people are basically they, trying they, to. They can't. Yes, they can't. They can't. It, yes. it, it's so clear what happened. Uh, it, it, it moved J.K. Rowling to say something. Uh, I don't know if you saw it, but it, she had, she had said, um, you know, that, that the violence is not a bug. It's a mm -hmm. feature of this authoritarian movement. And, yeah. um, you know, the public, the, the, you know, the general public, they really need to wake up about that because they, they see these people as victimized because they've, they've established that narrative. I, yes. You know, I'm all law enforcement and I use numbers. And I can tell you that they are one of the safest demographics in the United States, uh, probably second only to the Amish. They, 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 uh, they, uh, they create this image of them being under fire when nothing could be further from the truth. If you are a woman or you're a police officer, you are three times as likely to be murdered for who you are, not not an accidental death, a car crash or something, but because of who you are, then a trans person is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're the safest demographic in the UK. There was a, there's a brilliant thing that, that um, campaigners do uh, uh, here every year, which is they complain about Jess Phillips not reading any um, uh, names of trans women. On, on the, 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 and it's because no one's, none of them have been murdered. <laughs> you know, yeah. it's women who get murdered, not men dressed as women. Um, yeah, uh, and, and you, know, you can separate out their crimes, the, 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 the crimes that result in death. There are very, very, very few crimes committed against trans people because of who they are. Um, yeah. Crimes are primarily committed because of opportunity or because of, of domestic violence. And that's what usually gets them. Uh, mm -hmm. you, you know, I, I, I frequently say, you know, there's a tragedy every second in this world and very, very few of them are ever trans people. And mm. if they are, they probably brought themselves into the situation. Well, as we know, uh, the reason that uh, uh, the trans murder rates are, you know, presumably so high is because they took the murder rates uh, of sex workers in Brazil and That's right. extrapolated them globally. <laughs> so it's mm -hmm. uh, if you're going to enter into a, a, a business as dangerous as sex work, sorry to give it that, that term that is used by the other side all the time, uh, then these things are going to happen, I guess. Um, Fred, how are you doing? How are you? Yeah, sorry, go on. There was a murder here this spring of a, uh, a person purported to be trans, and I, I'm, not, I'm not convinced of that. I know he took some pictures. Um, not the kind of pictures I would have taken of myself, but he, you know, he, he was definitely playing with gender. But mm -hmm. before his murder, the last act that he uh, performed was identifying himself to the police. And he identified himself not as Fern Feather, but as Z Zachary Barbo. He used his driver's license. He used his regular ID, mm -hmm. um, you know, 
people play with with gender identity and when they say fluid it is fluid you know you you don't know from one second to the next who you're talking to uh, and, and that presents another problem of course mm -hmm. but uh, it, it, the reaction to that was that a hate crime had occurred in in Vermont mm -hmm. and uh, you know I wasn't quite so ready to say that because I didn't see evidence of that at the time. And uh, unlike the people who set up a petition on change.org to demand that the prosecutor file hate crimes enhancements to the charges, I went to the prosecutor's office to obtain the affidavit after the um, status hearing that was held. And, you know, I looked at the, the affidavit with a cop's eye and there is no hate crime there. Yeah. And there won't be a hate crime charge coming unless they develop new evidence, of course. But yeah. that's unlikely. We would have heard about it, you know, by the fall. So you so this is basically being turned into uh, a, a kind of narrative uh, a thing that holds the narrative up. That's right. It, it's it's fiction. Yes, sure, sure. Um, Fred, let's move on. I, I'm kind of a little bit nervous uh, because your voice sounds a bit croaky and I don't want to keep you on here too long. Um, uh, can I just ask before we go though, what, how are you doing? How, you know, what has the, you've been, to, I know you've had CAT scans and stuff. Are they, are you okay? What's happened? Yeah, the, well, the, the headaches have stopped. Um, they, 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 they were, they were mindful of, I, I take blood thinners. Uh, so you can see quite a few bruises on me from, from the impacts and, and uh, the, the concern about the, the blood thinners had to do with um, my brain and, and bleeding, uh, you know, plus the, the headaches. They, they're indicative of something perhaps occurring. So, you know, I've had subsequent ones to, to, to be watchful. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, look, Doing I don't better. want... You are sorry. You're doing better. Doing better. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, look. Will you do me a favor? Will you? Will you? Will you not go to any more Pride marches for a while? Uh, oh, I, I think can, I can't promise that. I've already <laughs> said yes. Oh, fucking I've said yes. There are Don't, there are groups you... that are taking the fight to one of the groups involved, and they've asked me to attend, and I've said yes. Okay. Well, in the meantime, for God's sake, will you just take care of yourself? Um, yep. take lots of rest and do whatever your husband says to you says to yeah. you to do <laughs> well, I wouldn't be there <laughs> <laughs> yeah well um, uh, Fred I think that's kind of uh, all I have I'm glad to know you're okay I'm glad to see you smiling and stuff um, is there anything else you'd, you'd like to say just before we sign off just hi to all the people in the UK you've been great <laughs> okay all right thank you so much Fred lovely to talk to you bye Okay, speak to you soon. Um, I needed to get Fred off the screen because I'm so upset by this. Um, and I don't want to keep him on when he's ill, when he's sounding so uh, croaky and stuff. But shame on Pink News once again for your disgraceful, traitorous, homophobic behavior. Ben Cohen, you are a disgrace for saying to Fred Sargent claim to be at Stonewall. That's the thing that I can't get over tonight. Um, I just want to say again, I'm in awe of Fred's bravery. I I I, I feel fr frightened as a you know 54 year old man. I can't imagine what it must have been like for him to face these people as a 74 year old man. Uh, he's an absolute hero, and uh, God bless you, Fred. Um, you keep yourself safe for God's sake. 